Welcome, fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic peeps to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers. And here is Jackson. <laughs> Busting in my door. <laughs> So guys, today it's another bookish video, specifically it is a freaking slasher themed vlog. So stay right where you are, right after the short intro, we'll come back and I'll tell you all about what I've been reading, what I've been doing, and all the slashery bloody goodness. Welcome back, guys! Eee, 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 eee. That's scary. <laughs> Slashy. Okay, just ignore me. I'm gonna put this away. It's very, it's very sharp and freaking scary. Anyway, I would not be a good slasher. I can barely hold this thing. All right, guys, welcome to the start of my slasher reading and maybe watching vlog. I'm supposed to be watching stuff. I did watch Chopping Mall last night, and. Andrew and I, Andrew of course is from the channel It Came From The Page, we recorded a drunk commentary to the movie and that will be up on my Patreon. And speaking of my Patreon, this slasher readathon is just for the middle tier and the top tier of my Patreon channel. I call all my Patreons Kelsey Corns, so this is the killer corn slasher readathon where we make little candy corns and corn on the cobs into slashers by completing different, very generic prompts. But a lot of us are actually choosing to read slashers, you know thematic reasons. Tonight we made freaking corn bisque or chowder or something. Anyway, corn something or other for our dinner. Also, to be thematic, I am, while I'm listening to a slasher themed audiobook, which is a Friday the 13th audiobook specifically, The Jason Strain, I'm using the YouTube channel The Slash Tracks Network to listen to that right now while I do a puzzle, and this is the puzzle I'm doing. You might be saying, this is not slasher related, these are random Lego minifigures. Yes, but there's a freaking corn. And because of the whole killer corn theme, this goes. So I'm counting it. I didn't have any slasher themed puzzles. I'm also currently reading Virgin Night by Chris Robertson. I am also reading, where is it? Kane by Douglas Borton, aka he wrote this under the name Michael Prescott. I am going slow with all of those because they're all physical reads, no audio for any of those. What I've already read so far, Joyride by Stephen Cry, freaking awesome classic slasher with a little bit more depth because you do get a peek into the past life of the slasher slash the killer. And yeah, it's pretty gruesome. And he slashes up some teens in some cool ways with different weapons. So very classic. Really like it. And by the way, the back of the book says more horrifying than Halloween, more grisly than Friday the 13th. So I do agree with that. You could totally see those movie vibes in this book. I also read Splattersaurus by Junith Sonnet. Sounded like I said Junith. Judith with a D, Sonnet, my first Judith Sonnet book. And this was fun. It's not really a slasher. It's like a killer dinosaur. And there's a twisty end, which I enjoyed. I gave Joyride a 4.5. I gave this, I think, a 3.5. And I also read Mayfly, but I kind of talked about that in a previous vlog. That was a five star. I do think it could be considered a psychological horror with slasher vibes. It did have some slashing. I also read Cover by Jack Ketchum, and I didn't really absolutely love that. There was a group of characters that you're supposed to root for, but I just thought they were cringe. It's like this writer guy, and he has a wife, but he also has a younger mistress, and they're all going camping with some other people as well. And then this poor Vietnam vet guy is traumatized, and he kind of goes into battle mode, and, and he starts killing people. I really sympathize with the vet, but I did not like the people you're supposed to want to survive, so whatever. I gave that, I think, a three, because I was pretty disappointed in that. And last but not least, last night I finished Night of the Prowler by John Athan, and that was brutal. That was really, like, very dark and bleak. 
is definitely an extreme book, not for everybody. It's hard to rate that one because it had some like extreme scenes of violence that were quite uncomfortable, and that's crazy for me to say because usually I don't get bothered by anything, but I was like, the violence, whoa. So I think I'm giving that a four because it was effective. It did read like a classic slasher. There wasn't a lot of character development per se, but I still enjoyed it for the slashing aspects, but it went sometimes a little too far, I think, with the violence, but still entertaining in terms of it did what a slasher is supposed to do. It did make me feel on edge. It made me nervous for the main character that we're hoping survives, and yeah. So far, pretty good. How many reads is that? One, two, three, four, five. Five reads completed and three currently in the works. Like I said, the Jason Strand, Virgin Knight, and Kane. Enjoying all of them. Like I said, a little by little, I'm picking them up one at a time. I think I'm going to continue building my puzzle and listening to the Jason Strain because I don't have a physical copy of that. And doing the puzzle while listening to it is quite relaxing. It's a lot of fun. And it is so absurd and bonkers so far. Anyway, this is way too long of an open. All right, let's cut to some more exciting footage and I will catch up with you guys later. <laughs>
We got you. We got video evidence of you stealing from the bird feeder. I did just finish the audiobook on YouTube only. That's the only place it's available for the Jason strain, which I read because I heard about it from Andrew, and it was bonkers. At one point, freaking Jason rips off the the freaking jaw of a shark and he uses it to kill somebody. And this girl, like, she's like about to be attacked by the shark and she's surfing. And she's like, oh my God, there's a shark. And then all of a sudden, like this guy comes out of the water, it's Jason, but she's like, oh, that's some weird scuba equipment. That's a weird diving mask that he has on. And of course it's a hockey mask. And he's like, <laughs> well, I mean, he didn't do that, but whatever, anyway. So then what happens was the shark's gonna lunge at her and then Jason like freaking intercepts the shark and is like, no bitch, and tears the freaking shark's jaw, like bottom jaw off. And he's like, like, Haha, I got his jaw. And the girl's like, oh, you saved me. And she like hugs Jason. And then she's like, thank you so much. I, I'm like in your in, like debt. And apparently like it's described in the book that Jason's all like, Ooh. like he's taken aback that he's getting a hug. He doesn't know how to react. Says the book, you know, not in those exact words. I'm paraphrasing, whatever. Then all of a sudden he's holding this like bottom of the shark jaw. And he's like, nah, bitch, I ain't gonna let you hug me. Boom. <laughs> freaking cuts her with the freaking shark mouth that he's holding like the freaking teeth it's great it's great so uh yeah i had a lot of fun i thought even though it's trashy it is 100 percent trashy i think the fact that it was written by a woman made it like better because there's a lot of boob description but i was like i feel like she's making a statement about slasher movies and also about like hollywood and tv and reality tv and all this other stuff. So I felt okay with all the boob talk because, I mean, it was a woman writer. And a lot of it was funny. And the guy who was, like, in charge of this television show was so over-the-top ridiculous and out there. that. It, and then the guy who did the YouTube narration was like, Jason, baby! Like, like he was talking like Hollywood. It was great. Anyway, the Jason Strain, it's on YouTube, slash tracks. <laughs>
checking in again. It's been forever. All right, last time I checked in, I told you about a whole bunch of books I was reading. I've shot a lot of B-roll and read a lot since then. I did a terrible job at updating as I've been reading, but I have been reading. And I actually just watched the second slasher of the month. So technically, if you count Chopping Mall as a slasher, which I don't really think it is. Anyway, the one I just watched after that would be my second one. So my Patreons and I, we watched a group movie on Discord, and that was Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2, and that was so fun. The ending was bonkers. It took a little while to get going, but there were some great dream sequences, and it really paid off in the end, this uh, big climax and crazy shit happening at the prom. So that was really, really cool. So that's the movie updates. I haven't really been watching a lot, but I have been reading, as I said. So since I updated you guys from my sprints about Friday the 13th, The Jason Strain, which I freaking had a blast with, originally I was going to give it a 4. I think I'm upping it to, I'm changing my spreadsheet right now, to a 4.5 because I had so much fun with that. I also started and finished Comedy of Terrors by Darren Blake that did have an audio book. I was doing my little corn puzzle as I was listening to that. That was okay, nothing uber special. You got this camp and people disappearing that's 3.5. Then the thing I'm most disappointed about in this whole vlog, Cock Blocker by David Irons. I feel like this had potential to be amazing. The kills were really cool, I will say that, and they were brutal, but the R word was used five times, and I feel like that's crazy for a book published in 2023. And it actually has pro messaging about, you know, accepting everyone, you love who you love, that part of it is great. But at the same time, you know, great kills can't get you that far. Great kills can't just make something a five star. You know, the language, like I said, it didn't need to be there. And it wasn't like it was just the antagonist using it. It was like these group of teenage girls using it. And yes, this is supposed to take place in the 90s. That word was said in the 90s, but still you could make it seem like it was the 90s without using that. Especially because there was lots of other 90s references. You didn't need to go that direction. I don't even know why it was there five freaking times. Also, the main character, they kept calling her crazy and a kook. And just the way it was handled was a little heavy-handed. And I think it walks the line at being a little insensitive, kind of, about mental health and like people who go through trauma. So I don't know. I have really torn feelings about this. I can't give it more than a three. The cover's amazing. It's a shame that I didn't love it more. I feel like a more skilled writer maybe would have done something even better with this same plot and with these same characters. So also I DNF'd Virgin Knight, which I hardly ever DNF. So I was 132 pages in. That's actually pretty far in to for me to give up, to DNF. But I just was not having a great time. I wasn't feeling like this was flying by. I'll just compare two things. I'm gonna talk about this book in a second. But this book I loved and I flew through it. It did not feel like a chore to read. It read really fast. This was reading very slow. And both I was trying to read physically only. This had an annoying character that just kept making jokes and interrupting everyone else's dialogue. And even though the character was an awesome, like diverse representative character. I feel like the character dialogue wise was very annoying and also not very dimensional. Now he may have gotten more dimension as the story went on, but I gave it 132 pages, but I just could not do it anymore. I'm gonna still give this a chance. It's not a hard DNF. I just wasn't feeling it. And there's a lot of other slashers I'd like to get to before the month is over. So yeah, for now, this one's a DNF, Virgin Night by Christopher Robinson. Luckily, after that, I actually had some luck with my next slasher reads and I enjoyed them a lot more than the ones I just talked about. So I read two books by Adam Caesar, like in the last couple of days, Tribesman, which actually has an audiobook, and so does this one, The Con Season. Both were fantastic. This one's shorter. This one I liked a little bit more. They're technically both the same rating, both four stars, but I don't know. There's something about this one that I really liked. It just felt like an Italian movie. And this one was a great little slasher. I like the endings to both. Both endings were great. This one, these people are putting on a convention at a summer camp and they're getting people like B-list celebrities from horror movies to come to the camp, but it's not all what it seems. The people who are appearing the celebrities, they might be in danger. So I liked the end a lot. I thought it was kind of like shifty, making you be like, hmm, what's going on here? 
this one you've got a film crew traveling to a remote place a place that's been cursed because of violence in the past and the actors and the director seem to kind of fall into madness and more happens than just that this is a very quick short but gory novel. I liked them both quite a bit. It took a while for this one to get started with the slashing, but great character development. When you read a book with not as much character development, and then you go to a writer who clearly knows what he's doing with character development, and also his love of slashers and his love of horror movies comes across, and his knowledge of all of that comes across, I feel like you could totally tell it's a stark difference. So from the other books I was reading, which didn't have good character development, or I wasn't enthralled with the characters, or I just wasn't getting invested in the story then I go to these and it's totally different vibe and I just think that's a testament to how great Adam Caesar is as an author he's a very skilled author and you can tell he's a fan of horror and he is and he's a fan of horror movies too next up I read the splatter western red station by Kenzie Jennings my first book by her I think it's a woman author either way I freaking love this book this was very enjoyable, very easy to read. It actually had an audiobook super quick, I think just over an hour in terms of the audio and the speed I was listening. I gave it a four, but it's a high four. So yeah, I really had a great time with this one. Essentially, you're back in the Western times. You've got these travelers. It's a husband and wife, a doctor, and then a random lady all traveling, and they stop somewhere to take a rest, and things devolve from there. Action goes down, and we've got a badass female awesome protagonist at the center of the story and she's an old school badass protagonist so like back in the day with like this fancy dress she's kicking ass freaking love that and last but not least i finally found another five star slasher this whole vlog i have not had a five star slasher i did rate mayfly a5 but that's more of a psychological book a character study it does have slashing elements because our main character is a killer essentially but I didn't consider that a pure slasher. I finally found a five-star pure slasher that I read during this vlog, and it was Escape from Happy Dale. This is book one of a trilogy, I believe, and this was so much fun. It's written like this is a found screenplay at first, so there, this author is like, oh, I found this screenplay in this director's office, and it was written by Jack Quaid, and Jack Quaid was an amazing author who wrote like the best, craziest trash. So essentially, it's being framed like there's this author, Jack Quaid, who's not a real author, I don't believe. It's part of the story that, oh, this unknown screenplay was found and so this author found it and made it into a book because it was going to be lost forever if he had not found it in this random director's place anyway i love this we've got a badass female protagonist again and she is the ultimate final girl because she's been trained on how to defeat slashers and she's been trained by like a like a woman who was also trained by generations of women before her on how to kill slashers and you know, they're responsible for keeping slashers at bay throughout all of time. So I think that's pretty cool. And basically our main character, Parker, she's amazing. She uses this awesome chainsaw she calls Aerosmith. We get like a little bit into a peek into her training journey and they got some references to Rocky and I just really, really liked it. I thought the main character, Parker, was really, really likable. I thought the violence was pretty pretty entertaining not anything overly special in terms of the kills but it definitely had the gore it definitely had decent kills and most importantly i think it had a great protagonist that you could get behind and it had a creepy main character or creepy slasher named hurricane williams and so yeah i really liked it and it was super fast to read even though all i had was a physical copy usually i struggle nowadays with just having a physical copy but bitch i freaking had a blast with this it was a breeze to read physically without any audio so that tells you right there that this one was good now i know my friend liz actually gave this like a 2.5 so maybe it's not for everybody but i feel like it still played into the sh slasher the typical slasher tropes but it did something unique with it and it had a very likable main character which i think is the most important thing when you're talking about slashers in the form of horror fiction versus slashers in the form of horror movies it's easier to like a horror slasher movie that has all kinds of unlikable characters as long as you've got cool kills you might have ridiculous scenes and um just fun b-movie type of thing it might be fine book form i feel like it's a little more rare to find a book with no likable characters and you still enjoy it as a slasher so i feel like there's a certain formula at least for me that makes a 
horror book a successful slasher book so yeah i definitely think that this was one of them and i had such a blast five stars baby woo and in the vlog on a positive note and actually i have decided to extend my readathon with my patreon members who i call kelsey corns i'm gonna extend it for the whole of june so i'm gonna be reading more slashers all month long so i might do a part two to this vlog because guess what there's plenty of slashing left to come and i'm not ready to stop for this time guys that is it for me till next time you guys know what you can do keep on killing it bye guys